Hey booktube, so now I'm here a uh, day after I shot my motivational mojito video, the January one. Now I'm doing the excerpts I told you I was going to do separate videos for. <laughs> after editing that uh, motivational mojito video. I apologize for so much of the video, you know, ha cutting half my channel. Still trying to get used to like good angles. Rookie mistake, but um, hoping more of my face makes it into this video. I tried to angle the camera a little bit better, so at least you get most of my face. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I guess the first one I'll start with was there was one little story in Dare to Take Charge that I was going to do as a separate reading and uh, I'll do this one in one video and then I'll do uh, the there's two speeches in um, reading the life you'll love book and I'll do a separate video for for those two I'll put the two in the same video but I'll do a separate video for that one so I'll just jump into this one there's a story in here she shares judge Glenda Hatchett uh, where she um, talks about the the people within her church community and one woman in particular she calls Mother Duncan who had a, a big impact on her and um, really had her thinking about uh, the blessings she has in her life. So I just thought I would share that that little bit and this uh, this portion she has in here she entitled A Gift and a Duty. So it says, at my church, the Mother's Board is a group of esteemed elder women appointed by the pastor who holds a special place in the life of our congregation. At the Providence Missionary Baptist Church, which the Hatchet family has attended since my parents were married, members of the Mother's Board wear white, including hats and gloves, every Sunday. Even in August, when any little bit of extra clothing adds measurable discomfort to the hot, motionless air of late summer in Atlanta, the Mother's Board assembles in their regalia and sits as a as a watchful presence. The mothers have a place of honor across from the deacons in pews running perpendicular to those of the rest of the congregation. During services, most of the congregation sits, sees them in profile. In my child's eye, this made the mothers seem even more dignified and important. Their duties were firmly established and included preparing the communion table with freshly laundered linens and their devotion. Among the mothers there were Mother Duncan, Mother Allen, Mother Watley, Mother Barry, Mother Eccles, Mother Jordan, Mother Hicks, Mother Kelly, and Mother Gamillion. They made a point of greeting every one of us. I imagine that they privately noted who was absent on any given Sunday. The weekend before I was able to leave home for Mount Holyoke College was, a busy, was busy with last minute shopping, packing, and goodbyes. Heading off to college was a very big deal, but not big enough to warrant missing church. After services, we all mingled in the sanctuary for a few minutes before going home to Sunday dinner. Mother Odessa Duncan came up to me. Everyone knew everyone else in our church, so even though Mother Duncan was not part of my parents' close circle, it was not surprising that she would know about me leaving for school. I figured she would offer a hug and good wishes. But Mother Duncan had something else in mind. Smiling, she reached for my right hand, pulling me toward her. She placed a little wrapped bundle in my palm, a white handkerchief embroidered with delicate red roses. Into each corner of the hanky, Mother Duncan had painstakingly tied a silver half dollar. As I looked up at her, she folded my fingers around the packet and took both my hands in hers. Baby, she said, I want you to run on. I can't go where you're going, but you run on, baby. And she hugged me, and before I could barely utter a thank you, turned and walked away. I clutched the little bundle until we got home where I opened it and reflected on the simple yet significant and beautiful gesture. I do not believe Mother Duncan finished high school, and I have no idea what point her formal education may have ended and for what reasons, but I was certain of one thing. Mother Odessa Duncan had never seen the inside of a college campus and could only dream of possibilities on my doorstep. What was important is that one of her own, a child of the church, was headed off for experiences this wise woman knew would be life-changing. Mother Duncan did not raise me, but like so many folks at church, she raised me up. She was part of a community whose members cared for each other in ways large and small. From cooking in times of celebration to offering comfort in times of mourning, from baptisms and communions and holidays to lost jobs and new babies, life cycle events were shared with this wonderful congregation that was my family. The packet Mother Duncan lovingly pressed on me, four silver half dollars, amounted to two dollars, but her gift had real value that could never be calculated or fully measured. 
that modest yet significant gift symbolized all I had been given, taught, and entrusted with. Mother Duncan's carefully prepared offering was a symbol of her hope and expectation, her caring and her pride. When Mother Duncan told me to run on, she wasn't just wishing me good luck or urging me to do well in school. She was telling me to embrace the opportunities before me and do what I needed to do to bring honor to myself and my community. Her charge to me to run on contained wisdom, sacrifice, and hope for me in generations yet born. In a poetic sense, she was telling me to run on ahead to higher ground, to a place that she could not go. Mother Duncan was telling me that there was much work to be done, passing the baton to me in a kind of generational relay. She couldn't run this leg of the race with me. It was mine to run. Knowing I had not gotten to Mount Holyoke by myself carried a huge responsibility, much bigger than any I had faced in Western civilization or intro to psychology. Mother Duncan's coins represented wealth beyond measure and an expectation that I would find ways to return the caring, the generosity, and the heartfelt encouragement. The four half dollars and Mother Duncan's words assured me that I was not going to college alone. Though she would never see the world I was entering, Mother Duncan and all the mothers would be spiritually by my side as I grew and attempted to create a life of purpose. So would my parents, the deacons, my godparents, my aunts and uncles, and so many generations who went before. I stand on the shoulders of generations past. My path was made possible by those who pressed on through incredible hardships, through slavery, segregation, quotas, and the more subtle forms of discrimination that persisted decades after the laws had been changed. I stand on the shoulders of those who boldly stood in the face of indignity and inhumanity, who made their way through lynchings and beatings when hope seemed hopeless and change was barely a dream. They raised me up and invested in me, and now I would have to find a way to repay that debt. Engaging my creativity and my personality as I define how to honor those gifts given to me, this is how blessings flow through me. None of us is much helped by receiving and not giving. We may benefit temporarily, but eventually we become bloated spiritually. Giving and receiving go hand in hand. Accepting and sharing are part of one cycle, really. We have to give in order to receive. When we receive, we have to give in order to make room for new blessings to appear and to take shape. The generations who came before me, who made my achievement possible, set the greatest example for paying a debt forward. I do everything I can in the spirit of Mother Duncan to not just offer money or symbols or prayer or good wishes. I try to actively engage with college students in my life to pay the debt of generations forward, to offer others the spirit of support and hopefulness and generosity and expectation because all these help me make my way. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys because I, I thought, you know, this would probably touch one of you the way it touched me. And um, hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.